Hello everyone, uh, this is Mtobi Simshong, your mathematics and physical science tutor. And today, and I hope you guys are well, and you're good in the exams and those who haven't started, hopefully all the exams are going to go well. In today's episode, we are going to look at uh, the Mpumalang um, grade 10 mathematics paper that has been written for June 2024. Uh, going to be looking uh, at question one, which is the algebraic expressions part. Now in question one, 1.1, this is round off. Um, if you can check back in one of the videos we did, do a mini video on how to round off. And then uh, in another video, we, we also did um uh between each two integers there's a simple set line uh, which is which was not part of this question because this question was very short here we have identifying the number system integers natural numbers and non-real numbers then it's factorization and also exponents and yeah let's get right into it in question one one point one they want us to round off they want us to round off. I need to scroll down here. 1.1. 1. 1. They want us to round off 2.09689 to what? To two decimal places. And Can I uh, rewrite my zero there perfectly? Okay, 2.09. Now, when we are rounding off, we focus mainly on what they want us to do here. So we look at the uh, rounding digit, which is the number or digit after the decimals in which they say we must round off the number of decimals they say we must round off is two so if after the decimal we start counting here and say one and two which means our rounding digit will be the third one here which we call our rounding digit and this rounding digit is a guide that if the rounding digit let me call it rd if rd is between 0 and 4 we keep the number or we keep the digit before our rounding digit which means we keep this 0 9 as it is but if a rounding digit is found between 5 to 9 then we need to add 1 to the last digit before the rounding digit which means we need to add 1 to what to 9 and when we add 1 to 9 we get 10 Already this was a zero nine. So zero nine and we add then if we add one to zero nine I don't know why I wrote this. Okay, if we add one to zero nine then we get plus one then we get ten. So it means now we're gonna be rounding off this as two point one zero. Okay, then let's write it properly. So if we were to say we are writing it properly, so if you round off 2.09, uh, 6, 8, 9, to two decimal places, it can be written as 2.10 by identifying that this is found between 5 and 9, and therefore we have to add 1 to the decimal places that they want us to work with, which is 0, 9 those two decimal places and then we write the answer in two decimal places because after the comma you can see that there's one and zero which are two decimals right let's move on to the next question the next question says if you're given b an element of negative three zero the cube root of six and a one and the square root of a negative two i have to write that down as 1.2 we're given B is an element of 
negative 3, 0. And the cube root of 6, uh, 1. And the uh, square root of negative 2. Now, from the set of B, we have to identify 1.2.1 integers. Integers. integers now what are those integers the integers that we get here are now integers are negative and positive whole numbers and the only whole numbers i see here it's a negative three is a zero and a one so those are your options since it's two marks it means they were looking for only two then in 1.2.2 we're looking for natural numbers natural numbers now natural numbers are numbers that start at positive integers that start at one so if you're counting it's one two three four all the way up to positive infinity and the only one that i see here from this set is uh is only <laughs> the one itself then next up they say we must identify the non-real number. Non-real number. Non-real. If a number is non-real, it's most probably the square root of a negative integer. So the only one here that is a square root of a negative t integer is this one here. So therefore it's a square root of negative two. Then we carry on into question 1.3, which says factorize fully the following expressions, 8y cubed minus 1. Factorize fully, 1.3.1, we factorize, 8y cubed minus 1. Now, in grade 10, we are being introduced into uh, more advanced <coughs> factorizations now this factorization looks like the general form which says x cube well basically this is a difference of two cubes how is it a difference of two cubes because this is the same as 2y cube minus a 1 cube now 1 to the power of any number it's always going to be 1 because it's 1 times 1 times 1 so now the standard form says that if you are factorizing the difference of two cubes, you say the first term minus the second term or last term. This is the first term and this is the last term. Then it's first term squared plus first term times second term and then plus last term squared. So now if we have to re- write our question that has been asked into this format we'd have to write it like this the first term here is a 2y minus the last term here which is a 1 and the first term squared is a 2y squared in bracket so 2y squared in bracket let's write it down on the side 2y squared will be i mean 2 yeah 2y squared will be a 4y squared so it's a 4 y squared plus the first term is 2y 2y times 1 is just 2y because it's first term first term times second term so this is a general rule of the difference of two cubes then plus the last terms squared now one squared is still one then you have fully factorized this one in 1.3.1 then the almost done in 1.3.2 you have an m open bracket x minus y plus y minus x okay let's have a look at that one in 1.3.2 1.3.2 you have m x minus y plus y minus x now one of the clues here that you might have is that this has already been factorized so whatever is in the bracket on the right side 
must look like what's on the left side that's a guide that normally happens so m x minus y plus now how can you make y minus x to look like um x minus y you have to rearrange these into what factoring out a negative and this is x minus y so factoring out the negative means that this positive needs to multiply with the negative and then now you have m x minus y minus x minus y then you can now easily factorize this x minus y and when you factorize factorize it from here you're left with m and when you factorize it from here you're left with what with a one so that when you multiply with it in two you still get x minus y then there you have it 1.32 now 1.4.1 says that you must simplify the following expressions 1.4.1 1 over 10 of 10 to the power of 800 1 over 10 of 10 basically I think it's 10 percent of 10 to the power of 100 so 1.4.1 1 over 10 of 10 to the power of 100 now when you say of it's the same as saying multiply so this is basically 1 over 10 times 10 to the power of 800 but 1 over 10 can be written exponentially as 10 to the power of negative 1 according to the 1 over a is equals to a to the power of negative 1 then multiply it by 10 to the power of a 100 and this then becomes a this becomes multiplying powers of the same base you add the exponent minus 1 plus 100 will give us 10 to the power of 99 the last question is a question from exponents which says 3 to the power of x plus 4 minus 6 times 3 to the power of x plus 1 uh, all over 7 times 3 to the power of x plus 2 you are going to um, forgive me for this screenshot because I just took a, a picture and it wasn't looking quite nice so I, will, I think I will attach the full question paper on um, on our video and the description okay let's do the last one it's a 1.4.2 it says 3 to the power of x plus 4 uh, minus 6 times 3 to the power of x plus 1 all over 7 times 3 to the power of x plus 2 now this is equal to so the next step here is called x expanding or you are moving backwards to the laws of exponent what do i mean by that if you have a to the power of 2 times a to the power of y this is going to be what a to the power of 2 plus y because same base at exponent now we are moving from here to this by expanding so basically i'm moving backwards to the law of exponent law number one then this becomes a 3 to the power of x times 3 to the power of 4 uh, minus 6 times 3 to the power of x times 3 to the power of 1 all over 7 times 3 to the power of x times 3 to the power of 2 now now that we see there is something common here which is 3 to the power of x 3 to the power of 3 to which we can factor out now if we factor out 3 to the power of x here i use something called a touch and feel if you touch this one and you can see that you left with 3 to the power of 4 times 1 there and then 3 to the power of 4 times 1 which just be 3 to the power of 4 then minus 6 if we factor out this one here we're left with the 6 times 3 to the power of 1 and therefore we're going to guess say 6 times 3 to the power of 1 all over a 3 to the power of x then we open a bracket for the 7 times 3 squared okay 
and let's do this real quick these two can divide such that you're left with a 81 which is 3 to the power 4 minus 6 times 3 which is 18 all over 7 times a 9 because 3 to the power 2 is 9 that will become a 63 which is equal to 63 over 63 and this is equal to 1 and thank you for watching our video stay tuned for more we're going to be posting more of this june exams from pumalanga and more please do uh, suggest in the comment section which questions would you like us to do and yeah keep well thank you for watching